Hey, what's up guys, Mike Red Fox. In this video, I wanna talk about, is it time to start spec mining some other cryptocurrencies besides Ethereum? So why I'm thinking about this topic is, Ethereum's got some events coming up soon. It's got EIP 1559, which is gonna reduce mining rewards. And it's got the move to proof of stake, which is gonna eliminate mining completely from its network. And this is an event that really has never happened before at this scale in cryptocurrency mining. Ethereum is the top GPU mined coin of all time. And it's gonna shut that off at some point in the near future. And even leading up to that, there's gonna be a point where maybe some hash rate moves off Ethereum because profitability just isn't what it used to be. And that's with EIP 1559. So what it's made me think about is, well, what other cryptocurrencies are out there that maybe I wanna move to ahead of time to take advantage of potential price increases later when the rest of the hash rate moves around when Ethereum either becomes not as profitable or turns off GPU mining completely. And that's what I really wanna talk about today. This is a risk. This is all speculative mining. Um, and with just the nature of it comes either some high reward or a complete waste of power and electricity. So know that before we dive in. And you know, when I think about it, there's probably might be oversimplifying, but two sets of miners, you know, right now. There's the miners that just jumped into mining over the last six months. We're attracted to this space because of profitability and are part of this awesome community. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to have all of you. And then there's the miners that have been in this for a little while, went through the last bear market, are familiar with speculative mining, familiar with chasing profitability, familiar with taking some risks and hoping that rewards pay off later. So, you know, for anybody that's new, this is a space that very shortly, I think you're gonna have to live in when um, Ethereum makes some changes to its network. And what you wanna think about now is, can you kind of front run some of that? Can you make some plays now, move some GPUs over to other cryptocurrencies that aren't Ethereum, get a lot of that cryptocurrency right now while nobody's looking at it, then will that potentially pay off later, even more so than if you just stayed on Ethereum the whole time? So let's switch over here and do some like hypothetical on this. And I'm gonna use Ravencoin as the example, but uh, before we dive into that, I'm on what to mine. I'm sure you're all familiar with this website. I've built out my rig of uh, 63060 TIs, and we're just gonna look at some profitability. I'm gonna ignore this. Uh, top cryptocurrency right now. And we're gonna stick with good old Ethereum, which this rig at 10 cents electric will pull in about $24 in profit uh, in a day, which is fantastic. Now, if you look down here, let's just stick with that Ravencoin example. You know, there's other cryptocurrencies here, but Ravencoin is honestly not too far behind. It's making $17.30 a day, but I'll tell you this, there's a lot less people mining Ravencoin than are mining Ethereum, that's for sure. We'll look at that data in a second. So next thing I wanna look at is Ethereum's price over the last year, and that's the chart that I have up here. So you can really see pretty steady price, right? I mean, it got a little wild around here when it went from like three grand up to over four grand. But other than that, I mean, over months since, really November, December, January was a pretty steady price increase. When you look at the network hash rate of Ethereum, this is you know GPUs joining the network, ASICs joining the network. You know again, pretty steady over the last year uh, increase in hash rate on the Ethereum network, and you know ultimately that's because the price comes first and then the hash rate follows. That's that's typically the trend. Now let's look at Ravencoin. Ravencoin's price was you know, pretty low, stayed around one, two cents. And then all of a sudden come February, boom, skyrockets all the way up. I think it hit almost 23 cents. 
And then, you know, kind of bounced around and, and settled down to where it is now around 10 cents, 9 cents, 10 cents. And let's look at the hash rate for Ravencoin. Look at that. Did the same thing, right? And what I want to focus on here is one other thing. Let's zoom all the way back a year ago. You can see Ravencoin was sitting at three and a half uh, terahash. And then as Ethereum becomes really profitable, what happens? Everybody stops looking at Ravencoin, they start leaving. We get below two terahash, one and a half terahash, and everybody's looking at Ethereum. Everybody's mining Ethereum because it's the most profitable. And then what happens? Then the price of Ravencoin goes up to that 22, 23 cents, and then all of a sudden everybody's looking at Ravencoin again. And they start moving all their GPUs over, and Ravencoin gets up to 11 terahash. And then what happens? The price drops, and so does the hash rate on the network, and it continues to drop down because now everybody's looking at Ethereum again. But what, what is really happening here, and what can you take advantage of when the price, I'm um, sorry, when the hash rate of a network is low? That means the difficulty is low. And what that equates to is you can get more of the native currency on that chain. You know, in this case, Ravencoin, you can get more Ravencoin when everybody's mining Ethereum. When everybody's mining Ethereum and you're on Ethereum, you're getting less Ethereum, not counting the fees and all that type of stuff that sometimes spikes. You're, you're getting less Ethereum for your hash rate because you're competing against everybody else that is also mining Ethereum. And that's where the difficulty comes in. But there's something to be said, especially when you think about spec mining of going the other way. Well, everybody's looking at Ethereum. I'm gonna go collect a nice hefty bag of Ravencoin while nobody's looking at it. And then potentially later when the price does spike, I can sell that for a lot more than if I just stuck on Ethereum the whole time. And this is where my mind is at. And you can do this, you know, with a bunch of different cryptocurrencies. The other one I have up is Firo, otherwise known in the past as Zcoin. I mean, this is even a more extreme example. Look at this going from 85 giga hash and then Ethereum becomes more profitable and it just, the, the hash rate on the network just tanks. It's down to seven, eight tera hash and then uh, Firo had a little bit of a price spike so people started moving over there. Um, then it settled out and coming down again. So again, nobody's looking at Firo, nobody's looking at Ravencoin, everybody's on Ethereum. And I'll, you know, I'll say like, if you're in a place where you're uh, biggest concern in the short term is paying off the GPUs that you have, then you're in exactly the right place. Maybe you're in a situation where you've paid off a lot of your GPUs now that you got earlier in the year. Um, maybe you've been in this a while and you have GPUs that you've had for years. This might be a time that invites you to get a little risky and a little speculative with how you mine. And the reason that I talk about this right now is because of the events that are coming up on the Ethereum network that are gonna force a change in the landscape of proof of work mining and where all that hash rate spreads out to. Now, the indicators that we saw in these charts are that price comes first and hash rate follows. And what we'll see probably when uh, the hash rate spreads is that hash rate will come first. And the risk and the question is, will price follow? From a profitability standpoint, an absorption standpoint, price has to follow or GPU mining is gonna be in a really rough spot. Will it happen? I, I just don't know. Nobody knows what the future is gonna hold here, but if you take the stance that, well, GPU mining is gonna be alive and well, and the prices of these other networks have to go up to accommodate that. You know, and maybe that happens beforehand. Maybe we start seeing some spikes in preparation on Ravencoin, on Firo, on some of these other networks. Or maybe it comes way later, you know, as we grind it out on Ravencoin or whatever it is that you land on, Ethereum Classic, whatever it might be. 
Maybe we grind it out and we're not profitable and then price potentially follows later. One thing I do know, and this is thanks to Bitsby Trippin, BBT, link for his channel is in the description below, is that there's some pretty high price targets that have to happen in order for the spread of GPUs and all the other uh, mining hardware to be profitable once they move off of Ethereum. So, you know, really what you look at for something like Ravencoin, who's sitting at, you know, 10 cents right now, I mean, this has to like go up substantially. You're talking a dollar, two dollars in order to maintain and take in that hash rate and maintain a profit once Ethereum goes proof of stake. And this is all speculative. Again, will that happen? I don't know. Um, I have what I think will happen, what I believe will happen, what I hope will happen. But all that being said, if you look that far down the line, what might you do now while nobody's looking at these networks to get a lot of their cryptocurrency, hold on to it, and then sell when the price dramatically increases later? And this is what spec mining is all about. This is what me and many others who have been in this for the last three, four years have done is you mine a currency while the difficulty is low because not much was profitable during this time. So you find one that you believe in with their difficulty is low, you hold on to it, and then you find a time when it pumps and you sell it for profit. And that's just the world that you have to live in during those times. And is that a world worth revisiting right now? Again, everybody's looking at Ethereum, nobody's looking at these other networks. You know, do I stick a rig on Ravencoin, collect a lot of it before everybody else jumps on? And then if price goes up, when that happens, I can sell that Ravencoin that I mined for a substantial profit. The other thing I wanna mention while we're on the topic of Ravencoin is that Ravencoin also has a halving coming which means that in January of next year, Ravencoin, the emission rate of Ravencoin will drop. So right now for every block, it's gonna be 5,000 Raven that are paid. And in January next year, that goes down to 2,500, it gets halved and Bitcoin does this, right? And if you look at Bitcoin's charts and it's halving schedule, what happens when Bitcoin halves Shortly after the price uh, increases because there's less Bitcoin being provided out into the wild and Ravencoin as a proof of work mineable cryptocurrency for us GPU miners will be doing the same thing come January 2022. So again, speculation, not only will it be hash rate moving over to Ravencoin, you know, probably if not before, probably around that time that Ethereum goes proof of stake, but also be less Ravencoin out there. So does that factor into the price going up because there's more value of uh, the Ravencoin network and its currency? That's the question. That's the speculation. That's the play. So really it comes down to what do you want to do? This isn't an all or nothing, right? Are you in a place where you still need to break even on your GPUs and you wanna do that as soon as possible and you're not worried about, you don't wanna worry about risk or learning other cryptocurrencies or algorithms or mining software, then just stick on Ethereum, ride it out. You know, if you got, uh, maybe you broke even on your GPUs or you wanna have some fun and have some risk, you can move, you know, one, two, a rig, depending what you got, a little bit of your setup over to one of these other networks that you see, you know, over here uh, on what's a mine that nobody's looking at. Do you go mine some Flux, some Firo, Ravencoin, Ethereum Classic, Conceal? I mean, we could go on and on, Conflux. Do you go mine some of these cryptocurrencies that may not be as profitable right now, but also their difficulty is really low, which means you can get a lot of rewards a lot of that native currency paid out to you that could potentially be worth a lot more later, especially with the events on the Ethereum network coming up. I would love to hear from you guys. Leave some uh, comments in the comment section down below. What are you thinking about? Have you already moved some GPUs, maybe a rig, over to mine some other currencies on some other proof of work networks? Are you sticking on Ethereum? 
when all this happens, like, what are your thoughts? Are you just gonna sell your GPUs and be done with GPU mining as long as you broke even? Are you gonna find a favorite cryptocurrency to mine, even if it's not that profitable? I would love to know all of your thoughts on this and maybe what other cryptocurrencies you might be mining right now that aren't Ethereum. Let me know in the comment section down below. Hit the like button if you like the video, if you like the content on GPU modding, subscribe for more GPU modding content. Join my Discord, links in the description below. And please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next video.